The Quick Response Team is a group of community stakeholders, um, 911 officials, um, first responders, and other community members who come together with a common goal of reducing overdose deaths in the county. I believe the importance of Narcan training uh, for the community is to put Narcan in the hands of lay people to help bridge that gap between the time that an overdose occurs and 911 is activated and EMS agencies actually show up to the scene. What's the average time for a first responder? Just, you know, a couple minutes. A couple minutes could, you know, make a difference if somebody had Narcan and was using it. We want to get them breathing again, right? So in my experience, that's exactly what happened. The naloxone that I administered to this individual got him from a point of gasping to a point of breathing. Their access to Narcan uh, means that we can save more lives. So this is naloxone, commonly called Narcan, and the purpose of naloxone is to get someone breathing again after they've suffered from an opioid overdose. Uh, naloxone works by actually kicking the opioid molecules off the receptors in the brain. So when administering naloxone to someone who's having an opioid overdose, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the scene is safe because if you get hurt, you can't help other people. So spend, you know, five, 10 seconds and look around to make sure there's nothing there that can hurt you. After that, you want to make sure that you call 911 because you want first responders on the road um, as fast as possible. You want to approach the patient and check for responsiveness. And you can do that simply by shaking their shoulders and saying, you know, hey, sir, ma'am, are you okay? If you don't get any response, you then want to look at their breathing. Normally we breathe about 12 to 20 times a minute, but someone who's overdosing on an opioid generally will be breathing less than eight times a minute or may not be breathing at all. So you want to spend about 10 seconds, look at their chest and see if you see any rise or fall of their chest. If you don't see any breathing or it looks like they're breathing very slow or you're not sure if they're breathing or not breathing, you want to go ahead and administer the naloxone because naloxone is very safe and if you give it to someone who is not having an opioid, opioid overdose, it's not going to do anything. You then want to open their airway by taking their head and simply um, lifting it back slightly. And what that will do is that will just make it a little bit easier to administer the naloxone and will also open their airway a little bit and keep the tongue um, out of the flow of air. After that, you are going to pull out your naloxone and you're gonna pick a nostril and you're gonna push the plunger on the naloxone to actually deliver the drug into their nose, which will then absorb into their bloodstream and will actually kick the opioid molecules off receptors in their brain. After you've administered that dose of naloxone, you can move the person into the recovery position, which basically means just putting them on their side. And the reason we do that is if someone does vomit, it'll keep their airway clear and will make sure that they don't aspirate any of their vomit. After that, you want to watch the person, and if after three minutes you don't see any improvement, they're still not breathing or they're still unresponsive, you can go ahead and give another dose of naloxone. And you can keep doing that every three minutes, checking them, reassessing them, and if you don't see an improvement, you can keep giving another dose of naloxone until first responders get there. If you are trained in CPR, instead of moving them in the recovery position, you can go through the steps uh, that you were taught in CPR training, which would be once again, you know, checking the breathing and then at starting compressions and ventilations. If you're not trained in CPR though, you can simply roll them into the recovery position and monitor them for improvement. So at this point, you've done everything that you can do and you've called 911, so first responders should be en route and they'll be able to take over care of the individual once they arrive. Narcan comes in because at the end of the day, you know, naloxone, Narcan, it gives people another chance. It's an easy way to save a life. Who are we to say that they don't deserve another chance? Had that Narcan one, two, four, 15 times, you know? It takes a little bit longer and there's no timeline for recovery.